You hear that? Shutters opening up, window panes being squeaky cleaned, factories restarting and engines firing up. Yep, the car industry is back in business. So sanitize your hands and get down to the showroom where salespeople are set to serenade you from a distance of two meters with enticing special offers. I can already taste the octane back in the air. Meanwhile, the Bond movie release might have been delayed, but building his car is back on. Also, staycations might mean a nationwide caravan blight. Ford police cars start to pack serious heat plus stand by for Mark 1. And finally, no, you can't test your vision at the wheel. Who do you think you are? Mr. Magoo? Why do you think Stevie Wonder doesn't have a driving license? All that to come. So make sure that you follow, share, subscribe, comment, all the rest of it. Make sure you're subscribing to this channel. Make sure you hit that bell notification icon. Follow me on social media. Just search for hashtag Brown Car Guy. That's on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, subscribe to browncarguy.com. There's another link I'll give you at the end of this video, which has some exclusive piece of content just from me to you. Closed showrooms have been costing the industry 61 million pounds a day. So you can imagine the relief when they were told they could open up again today, the 1st of June. Jaguar Land Rover will be opening 173 dealers eager to start selling their all new Land Rover Defender. Yeah, that's in the new Bond movie too. But 40% of consumers have said that they're worried about checking out cars in showrooms, although 75% of people still want to go to a showroom before buying a car. So steps have been taken. In addition to JLR, there's press releases from Skoda, Seat, Nissan, FCA, Mitsubishi, etc. And all the dealers will be following guidance from SMMT, Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, and NFDA, National Franchise Dealers Association, which includes things like sanitizers everywhere, constant cleaning of cars and surfaces, more spaces around the cars, viewing by appointment, information videos instead of staff showing you around the cards and talking to salespeople via Zoom. You know what's great about all this? You can spend as much time opening and closing boots, pressing all the buttons and sitting in cars making broom broom noises and nobody's going to come up and bother you. Isn't that great? Even better, unaccompanied test drives. Oh yeah, you can just take the car and go. Now, I'm not suggesting you should drive it like you stole it much, but you could take it to your local high street, crank up the stereo and make like you own it. Except for Catro. Oh, you can drive it on your own, but there'll be a pace car with you in case you need assistance. In other words, to keep an eye on you. Damn. Oh, but dealers really want you to buy their cars. Car production in the UK was down 99.7%. Only 197 cars were made in April. Actually, they were finished. They'd already been assembled. And 152 of those were for export. There's 121,811 fewer cars built this year already compared to last. The SMMT reckon there will be less than 1 million produced this year. That's 400,000 less than 2019. That hasn't happened since 2009, the last recession. It'll cost the industry 12.5 billion in losses. But whilst they've started making new cars again, there's tons of unsold cars clogging up airfields right now. So dealers are desperate to move metal. So now is the time to bargain hard. Not that some of them aren't already prepared to make some spectacular offers. Mazda is advertising an offer for our time. What does that mean? A free face mask? I'm sure they'll throw that in along with the clothes off their back if they can get your business. But actually what it really means is 0% APR PCP across their whole range. Yeah, that includes the MX-5. This is until the 30th of June with no minimum deposit except for £500 the Mazda 2. And that's for up to 48 months. Plus, there's an option of a three-month payment holiday. And we all know how handies, handy those can be. And uh, Kia is also offering 0% APR on many of its models with reductions on others and a scrappage scheme offering up to £2,500 on some old cars. Though maybe not this old car. Certainly not that old car. And uh, yeah. I'm sure not this one of Asian Top Gear.
<laughs> FCA, that's Fiat, Jeep, Abarth, Alfa Romeo, they recognize that 31% of UK motorists want to buy a new car but are worried about losing their jobs. So every car that they finance and lease from today till the end of September comes with job loss protection, which can be activated during the first 12 months of the agreement and the payments for seven months can be waived. Now, if that's not an excuse to punch your boss in the face, what is? Not that I'm advocating violence or anything like that, but it's a good safety net though, that isn't it? Buying and owning cars is one thing, but how do you keep them safe from the dreaded COVID-19 virus? Ford might have come up with an answer. Now, in response to a request from the police in America to find a way to kill the coronavirus in their patrol cars without having to clean them all the time, Ford decided to crank up the heat. No, really. So what they did is they rejigged the software to heat up the interior of a car to over 133 degrees Fahrenheit, that's about 56 degrees C, uh, by running the car at 2000 RPM for 15 minutes with the heater full on. They reckon that will kill 99% of the gems. What about the last 1%? That's what will get you. Anyway, this system is being introduced exclusively on the Ford Explorer base factory built police interceptor vehicle. You have to have a special key code to activate it remotely and the car locks so no one can get in because that would be quite bad. Anyway, I mean, I've actually lived in Dubai, of course, and in the summer there, the interior of the car does get a lot hotter than that. You can fry an egg on the dashboard, so maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. So while things might be heating up for the cops in America right now, at least this kind of police action only kills viruses. Anyway, back to manufacturing. And Aston Martin just announced that it will resume DB5 production after 55 years. That's the original Bond car from Goldfinger as driven by Sean Connery, the second best James Bond, of course, the first one being Roger Moore. You can put all your angry and hateful responses in the comments below. I'm trying to do the whole Roger Moore eyebrow thing. Never mind. Uh, so they're making 25 DB5 Goldfinger continuation cars costing 2.7 million pounds each, which actually come with a Q department gadgets, including a smoke screen, oil slick delivery, revolving number plates, simulated front machine guns, rear shield, battering rams, tire slasher, simulated radar screen, and of course, an actuator button in the gear knob and the removable passenger side roof panel, although no actual ejector seat. Come on, that's the best thing. Look, just take three million and give me the ejector seat. You gotta have the ejector seat. I'll tell you what they do uh, put in though, better brakes, which uh, Sean Connery could have really used because he smashed the thing into a wall at the end of the movie, didn't he? Oh, at the end of that sequence, anyway. <laughs> More news from Aston Martin, which, by the way, also announced the shock replacement of their boss, Dr. Andy Palmer. I met him, he's a nice guy, uh, with some German guy that runs Mercedes AMG. Well, actually, some of those engines do go into Aston Martins. You know, Mercedes should just hurry up and buy Aston Martin. That's what I've always said, especially as they're cheap right now. Share prices have fallen from 19 pounds to just 35 pence each. Even I could own a bit of Aston now. But that's not the news I was going to tell you. The news I was going to mention is that it's going to be taking part in the virtual racing series, the all-star lineup of Le Mans. No, I'm sorry. I, I don't get the appeal of watching digitally created cars racing around simulated environments. Where is this, the Matrix? I mean, we can all play racing games. Where's the real bravery, grit, and determination that you expect to see from proper racing drivers? And what if you get used to it? Is this going to be the future? I mean, just how deep does this rabbit hole go? Nah. Real cars, real tracks, or nothing, as far as I'm concerned. So moving swiftly on to real cars and proper cars, muscle cars. In fact, there's more good news from Ford. The Mark 1 name is returning, and yes, it will be on a Mustang, and no, it won't be an electric car. Here's some teaser pictures of the car as it's being tested. It'll be a performance version of the current naturally aspirated 5 litre V8 Stang and is said to be track capable, so I can't wait to see it. It's too early to say, of course, it will come to the UK, but you'd like one, wouldn't you? Well, I would. <laughs> what you won't like, though, is the spectre of caravans clogging up the hitherto empty B roads of Britain, as people not being able to travel means that they'll be doing staycations and they'll be taking their caravans out on the road. Um, Personally, I suggest people buy camper vans instead. In fact, thinking about it, could camper vans be the way that people travel distances now that nobody actually wants to fly anywhere? Hmm, I think that'll be a separate video. Stay tuned. Like I said, make sure you subscribe and hit notifications. 
I may have some commentary on that. But finally, let me categorically go on record to say it is not a good idea to go for a drive if you're worried about your eyesight to see if you're okay to do so. Because you're not. It's as simple as that. In light of recent political events, which we won't go into, but it involved the British Prime Minister's chief advisor, Dominic Cummins, breaking the lockdown rules that he helped to create. Anyway, road safety organisation Gem Motoring Assist felt it necessary to put out a release urging drivers to avoid getting behind the wheel if they have any concerns about their eyesight. Gem Road Safety Officer Neil Word said, there are simply no excuses for driving when you're unsure you can see properly as you risk causing injury not only to yourself but to your passengers and to anyone else who happens to be in your way. Poor eyesight is linked to more than 3,000 fatal and serious injury collisions every year. I don't know if he really talks like that but that's what he said. So. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this update. Uh, please make sure that you subscribe to this channel, hit that notification uh, icon, and make sure, like I said, you follow me on all the social media channels. Just search for hashtag Brown Car Guy on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the rest of it. Subscribe to browncarguy.com. And that URL that I was going to tell you about is patreon.com forward slash Shazad Sheikh. And there you'll find some exclusive piece of content only available there, which is kind of like my parody sequel to the original Cannonball Run movie. I think it's a lot of fun. You tell me what you think about about it. Even if you can't support me on Patreon, then please do continue to like, share, comment, subscribe, all the rest of it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.